got the attendees in the room and uh, maybe Nick, I'll, I'll, I'll hand the mic over to you to introduce yourself, uh, the team and, and Wake. Thanks so much for coming on Psychedelic Capital. Thanks a lot, Patrick. And thanks a lot, Connor and the rest of the team for putting on such good events uh, all year. We've really enjoyed them and happy to be, happy to be a part of this one. Um, here at Wake, we're really excited about playing a very small role of this psychedelic renaissance that we're all happily and, and luckily living through. We are driven by organic uh, mushrooms that are from our farm here in Jamaica, driven all the way up to our bottling plants in California and Canada, and really using technology at the core of everything we do, from the farm to our patients and our participants in our clinical research studies, uh, everything is driven by science and organic products that are really built with the best um, best methods possible. I'm really happy to be introducing three of our uh, team members that I'm really loving working with and really excited about the future with. We have Terry Pauline Smith, CEO of Wake Jamaica, Audia Barnett, COO of Wake Jamaica, and Olga Chernilos, Chief Science, Science Officer of Wake Network Incorporated. I'll be passing the mic over right now to Audia to speak a little bit around the legality of mushrooms and mushrooms in Jamaica. Thanks a lot, Audia. Thanks so much. Thanks, Nick, and thanks to the organizers for really um, accommodating us in this session. A lot of us would know Jamaica as a small island developing state that is noted for punching above our weight. We have made our mark on the international scene in music, sports, culinary products, but also our genetic resources, our rich genetic resources. And of course, you know some of them. I'm speaking, of course, of ginger and our, our um, various types of vegetable material that Jamaica is well noted for. One aspect of the country that's not so well known, especially outside of the United Nations, is the fact that Jamaica is a pace setter. We are a pace setter at, at international fora of the G77 countries, as well as the small island developing states of the United Nations. So countries look to Jamaica to set the lead, to set the tone, especially among the developing countries. Jamaica is a signatory to the UN Convention on Psychotropic Substances, which covers the Schedule I substances, including psilocybin. And as we know, the convention doesn't have the teeth to exercise control over psilocybin mushrooms. This is left to the domestic jurisdictions. For years in Jamaica, pockets on the island have seen psychotropic mushrooms being harvested and sold in various forms with little legislative oversight. And Jamaica is one of a mere handful of countries that does not actually list psilocybin mushrooms as being illegal. However, I must caution, this does not translate to these products being legal. Many would know the story of cannabis and would be surprised to know it was just recently that cannabis, otherwise known as gander, was decriminalized in Jamaica. And the process has been and continues to be a very tedious, arduous, costly one, with many lessons which will no doubt help us on our journey that um, psilocybin mushrooms will take. The country, Jamaica, has identified STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, agriculture, ICT, coding, as priority areas for achieving its vision 2030. And the work of WIC Jamaica has positioned mushrooms, including a range of therapeutic mushrooms, as an ideal vehicle for utilizing these priority tools to achieve our vision. An appropriate regulator framework is central to the development of this sector, as with any sector. So we have various ministries that will play a role. The Ministry of Health and Wellness, Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries, the Ministry of Industry and Commerce, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, and even the Ministry of Tourism are all important players and each carry their own requirements and criteria. So it's very complicated. Already, it seems that like food, a rigorous regime involving safety requirements, good manufacturing practices, traceability, 
hazard analysis, critical control points is likely. With the world uh, giving a spotlight on mental illness and the potential role of psilocybin in therapies, a plethora of interest groups have been looking to Jamaica as a production hub for psilocybin. The time therefore appears to be right for requisite steps to be taken to effect regulation. Studies therefore carried out by Wake Jamaica in collaboration with the Wake Network, universities and research centers, both in Jamaica as well as in Canada, are crucial and will provide new knowledge, data, and the scientific basis for setting the rules of the game. This is likely to stimulate strategic investments, trade, growth of the economy, as well as a suite of income generating opportunities for various segments of the local population. And very importantly, provide new avenues for addressing a range of mental illnesses. I thank you and I will now hand over to my colleague, Perry Pauline Smith. Thank you, uh, Audia. I hope everyone can hear me. Um, I'm really excited about being part of this. Uh, thanks to the organizer. And like Audia has pointed out, Jamaica tends to punch above their weight, whether we're talking about Bob Marley or Hussein Bolt. And in the conversation about uh, philocybin mushrooms and gourmet and, and functional mushrooms. I think the partnership of with Wake Jamaica has with Wake Network, we are definitely doing that again. I am hoping that my screens, with my slides I've prepared will open up. Um, the mission of Wake is, is a very simple one. And I know a lot of people say it, but we actually are very proud of the fact that we're doing it. That our mission is to reclassify philocybin as a medicine and to promote the benefits of not just philocybin, but of all mushrooms um, in Jamaica. And we're getting that opportunity to do that. But what I really want to talk to you about is one of the things that makes what we're doing in Jamaica so different. We've developed with the leadership of Wake Network, we've developed a decentralized production system where we've been able to work with poor women and marginalized youth to do much like how the internet has been built, where little piece of the knowledge has been transferred across the nation into the, the, the mind of and hands of, in, of individuals. And so this is a situation where Jamaica hasn't just talked about fair trade growing mushrooms. We've literally built an industry where non-readers and marginalized youth and poor women have all become um, artisan mushroom grower and based on the different microclimate that we're working with in Jamaica, we have a decentralized production system where different mushrooms are being grown in different climates around Jamaica. Uh, part of what made me very excited to be connected with Wake was that Wake actually looked at what was happening in Jamaica around social enterprise, looked at income and food security and said, we want to be a part of this. And we don't just want to talk about uh, being a, having the community a part of the of the the system, but they looked at what had happened in cannabis and how a lot of the the poorer Jamaica, the Rastafarians, the people who had gone to jail, who had developed the strains of cannabis, felt that they had been left out of the of the equation, and so our entire system has been built around the idea that the artisan growers, those individuals across the nation, are a part of the system. And so we're not just, psilocybin is just one of the mushrooms that we're growing. We are very excited about our functional mushrooms. We, are, we have a really successful gourmet edible mushroom system that we're working with in, in Jamaica. And um, 
I am going to not talk very long because I know you will have a lot of questions for me and my slides have decided not to work. So I think, oh, there we go. As, as you can see, <laughs> Nick and I are um, lead. It's that coming together and people in Jamaica is responding even to the fact that visually in a time of racial um, separation across the world, what we have is a coming together of North America and the Caribbean in an idea of building something absolutely wonderful. I hope you have lots of questions and um, I'll be really, really, really eager to talk to you about how we grow the poor women who grow our mushroom, the level of artistry that we have. One of the things before I stop talking, I want to tell you, most people who come to Jamaica is very surprised because Jamaica does not have the same access to the type of substrate that you would use in Europe and North America. We don't have uh, straw, we don't grow hay, we don't have a forestry for hardwood sawdust, we don't grow any of the, the, the crops that offer bran. And so when you decide you're going to cultivate mushroom in Jamaica, you must be prepared for innovation. So we mushrooms that are being grown in Jamaica, we are using unconventional substrate and unconventional processes. And that is part of what makes what we do artisan grow. I'm very excited about all of this and I hope you have lots of questions that I can answer. But I'd like to introduce you to one of the prettiest members of our team. And I can say that, well, Nick can't say that. Uh, Olga is not just uh, brilliant. She is articulate about why the natural product is so much better than synthetic. So I'd like to hand over to Olga. You know, and, and Nick and, and uh, Audia, you can jump in. Uh, J Jamaica actually provides a very unique and perfect uh, situation to grow mushroom year round. A lot of people think of Jamaica as hot, but if you actually traverse the, 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 the country, you will find that we have a lot of different microclimates. We have uh, areas where it's cold, we have areas where it's hot and humid, and there are mushrooms that will grow in every different kind of a microclimate. One of the other exciting things about growing mushroom in Jamaica is that we have developed a system that is a closed loop system. So everything from creating the, the spawn and the spores to what we do with the waste is, is a very closed loop system. Um, that is important because there is no waste. Uh, Wake Jamaica Limited and Wake Network runs on the idea that there has to be a triple bottom line to everything we do. So when, when we leave a community, we want that community to be better off socially, financially, and environmentally. And some of the things we're doing with the mushroom, with the mushroom waste, is very exciting because we, the women who work with us, they make better than minimum wage. We are better in the, the environment by making sure that our waste is contributing to the development of better soil. And environmentally, we are just way ahead of Time. I see we've got the beautiful Miss Olga back, so I'll stop talking for a minute. Thank you, Terry, for holding the stage, and thank you, Connor, for bringing me back. Um, so I want to take it forward from where Terry has left it off. So by us growing, producing psilocybin mushrooms in Jamaica, not only we improve the socioeconomic status of a vulnerable population there, but we definitely contribute to the global body of psychedelic research in general. And it pertains primarily to research in microdosing, because we know that there has been a vast body of very exciting research. Thank <laughs> you.